going on guys? Welcome to another video. As you saw in the title, today we're going to be talking about is your metabolism broken? I think this is a really, really important conversation to have. Feel free to share this, give this video a like, subscribe if you enjoy the content, and let's dive right into it. So the question is, is, is your metabolism broken? Short answer is no. There's actually, there's no such thing as a broken metabolism. This idea of a starvation zone or anything like that, there's really no weight in terms of like it's actual, like is it factual. However, our metabolism does fluctuate. And it's super important to understand this in simple, palatable terms so that you can better appreciate and comprehend your biology, your body, and then how to diet in a way that creates long-term success for you, okay? So we have to understand that our metabolism is kind of controlled by two things roughly. There's a lot of nuance here, but two things roughly, and that is our NEAT and our hormones. So our NEAT is our non-energy activity thermogenesis, so the things that we do when we're not exercising. And yes, exercise does impact our metabolism, but we're talking about baseline here. So NEAT is like nodding your head, flipping your thumbs, moving, dancing, woo, all that fun stuff, right? That's NEAT, okay? And then your hormones. I would say your hormones are the top dog here when it comes to metabolic function. Why? Because hormones and neurotransmitters control mood. They control how you feel. If you're more confident and positive and have more serotonin and dopamine, all those good things going, then you're going to have more neat just by happenstance because you're in a better mood. You're more jumpy. You're more flippy. You're all this fun stuff. And so hormones dictate neat. Hormones can dictate a lot of things. That's one reason why when a bodybuilder is dieting down really hard, um, one of the things that makes it so difficult is your hormones and neurotransmitters aren't at the levels that they should be. And so you really have to force yourself to be active, to keep up that caloric burn, to keep yourself in a deficit so that you can get as lean as you want to get. So understanding that is like super important. Why? Because our hormones communicate with our body and they downregulate and upregulate depending on the environment, right? That's why you get issues that you get like estrogen dominance and progesterone issues and testosterone issues. Those issues arise because certain things are going on in the body that signal different hormones to create more of themselves, different hormones to create less of themselves, some are getting metabolized well, detox pathways, all these kinds of all these kinds of things that create these environments in our bodies. One way, and this is important for this video, one way that our body communicates with hormones is through caloric intake. If our body is getting in adequate calories, hormones are generally happy. If you're getting whole foods and an adequate amount of them, generally your body's going to be happy. <coughs> so that's a good thing. However, when our body, when we remove calories, when we remove food from the diet, our hormones are going to downregulate. They're going to come down. You see this? They're going to come down. It's, it's, it's normal. It's normal. Stress hormones go up, and then sex hormones go down, and this is going to cause, one, just within itself, of the creation of hormones going down, you're going to get a lower caloric burn because your body's not burning as many calories making hormones. So that's one thing that we have to factor into this as well. So hormones are going to downregulate if you eat less food. Now, with the ketogenic diet, there is a benefit that a higher saturated fat diet has been shown to elevate and keep sex hormones elevated longer. This is going to keep the metabolism from adjusting as quickly, right? Um, we also understand that this doesn't happen very quickly. It can if you're severely calorically um, under, but if you're just dieting, this doesn't happen within a month. This is the, the, this down regulation happens over the course of months, if not years, depending on how aggressive you're being. So we see hormones go down, right? And this is going to result in a lower caloric burn. It just is like that is how it works. There's no way around it. Now. Another thing we have to factor in is that when hormones go down, like we talked about earlier, your NEAT goes down. When your NEAT goes down, that also equates to a lower calorie burn. So now, over the course of dieting 6 months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, you've created an environment in which you are burning a lot less calories than you did when you started. Make sense? So your metabolism isn't broken, 
It's actually working really well. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It is down-regulating things to keep you from dying. That is, its, that is its thing. That's how it jumps on this, right? That's how it encourages you to conserve so that it can save itself. Your body is a survivalist. It is just trying to do what it's built to do. So the question is not how do I fix my metabolism, but more so how do I upregulate? How do I tell my body, hey, it's okay. You can increase food. You can increase hormones. You can increase my needs. I can have more energy. There's enough food coming in. There's a couple ways you can do this. Let's do this in layers because depending on how long you've been dieting, all of these are going to be an option for you. The first one is a refeed. Okay, Very simply put, a refeed is an increase in calories. If you're eating 2,000 calories a day right now, then maybe on Saturday and Sunday you'll increase your calories by about 500 each day. So you'll go 2,000 Monday through Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday you'll do 2,500 calories each. That would be two refeeds during that week. You're just increasing calories slightly to stimulate the metabolism. If you've been dieting for only a couple months, this is a great tool, and what I would do is I would implement it, and if you see a good response by your body and the scale and in your measurements and all the things you're using for progress, I would continue to have those refeeds every weekend and just continue from then on, okay? Number two is a diet break. Diet breaks can be extremely beneficial. Basically, to put in a term that makes sense, a diet break is literally taking a break from your diet. So you would go an entire week. So like, let's say if you're eating 2,000 calories Monday through Friday, right, and you have your refeeds and you stop losing weight, or maybe you've been dieting for the past six months and you've stopped losing weight, both these scenarios work just fine, then you would take an entire week off and eat 2,500 calories every day for that entire week. This is going to prolong the increased caloric amount, which is going to help stimulate your hormones in your body even further to go, oh, I'm not dieting anymore, it's okay, I can start my normal processes and I can upregulate some things. You should see a nice little weight loss plateau being broken after that diet break when you go back to your core calories beforehand. I will say that if you are option B, so the, the second option of I've been dieting for six months with no refeeds or anything, when you're done with that diet break, when you go back to dieting, I would implement those refeeds we talked about in the first option. So those, those, those two extra days of higher calories on Saturday and Sunday. Now, also, before I jump into the third, which is the reverse diet, which is the crown jewel here, um, the first option on the refeeds, you do not have to increase carbohydrate load, just calories. Use it for fat and protein. Fat is your energy. Protein is how your muscles recover. Get your calories from fat and protein. If carbs happen to go up a little bit naturally, don't stress it, but you do not need to carb load on a refeed. You can do it just fine with calories. Fat stimulates leptin and all the hormones that increase metabolic function just fine, okay? So now we go have option three. Option three is called the reverse diet. This is something that I specialize in. I have helped, literally, I have helped more people reverse diet than lose weight. And I've worked with over 100 people on this thing. Reverse dieting is the crown jewel. So what is a reverse diet? It's the exact opposite of dieting. So as you diet, these things go down. You slowly increase, you slowly decrease calories. In fact, I'm just gonna use this marker real quick. So you slowly decrease calories. That marker does not work. I have a marker that works. So you slowly decrease calories, right? And these two go down. So you slowly decrease calories, hormones go down, meat goes down, all that jazz. You get a lower caloric burn. So a reverse diet is literally just going back up in calories. So if you started at 2,500, right, and you've gotten down to 1,500, and you've done that over the course of, you know, six, seven, eight months, maybe you've been dieting that long for a year. Okay, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go up by 50 to 100 calories a week. And you're gonna wanna try and get back up to where you started. You're gonna get back up to a maintenance slowly. Now, the beauty of a reverse diet is that because you're slowly increasing the caloric load, you're giving your body time to adjust and you're minimizing fat gain, okay? So that's the beauty of the reverse diet. I've even seen people lose weight going up on a reverse diet because they're increasing hormones and stimulating them, which is getting them excited, making them move more, bringing that knee up quite quickly, which creates an overall greater caloric burn, which puts them back in a deficit. So we see them actually losing weight, eating more food. 
who doesn't want that? So a reverse diet can be an amazing thing. I do encourage you if you've never done it, if you're not comfortable with it, it is a mindset game. Get with a coach, get with somebody. I have spots available. Um, as the time of making this, of course, feel free to email me if you have questions. But reverse dieting is a very powerful tool. And then the fourth one, bonus round, we have what's called a recovery diet. So let's say you're someone that's been dieting for a couple years. You're chronically, let's say like you're, you're female, you don't have your cycle anymore, maybe you're a man and you have like no testosterone, you're just, your body's just done. A recovery diet is gonna be your best bet. A recovery diet is where you would just jump up to 2,500 calories. Now, caveat. With recovery diets, you are going to put on body fat. You've got to understand that your body is needing to recover. And right now, the goal is to get your metabolism healthy. Think long term. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If you have any other questions, please let me know in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next one.